Welcome this morning, the second Sunday of Easter. Good morning, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in your homes in his name and we share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. It's good to have Mr. Rutherford once again. Here we are standing in our beautiful, loving, and loved building. But the church, yourselves, good to see you and good to imagine you this morning. The readings this morning on the second Sunday of Easter is John chapter 20, verses 19 to the end, and Acts chapter 2, 14 to 22. But I'd like to sing a verse of one of my favorite Easter hymns. And I hope you'll join in, please, yeah. Praise to the Lord, the Almighty, the King of creation. Oh, my soul, praise him, for he is thy health and the salvation. Only who here, now to his temple draw near, joining in glad adoration. Praise to the Lord, O oh, let all that is in us adore him. All oh, that hath life and breath come now with praises before him. Let the Amen sound from his people again. Gladly for a we adore him. Here is the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to St. John, chapter 20, verses 19 to 31. Jesus appears to his disciples. On the evening of that first day of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and side. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Jesus appears to Thomas. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands and put my finger where the nails were and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, my Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. The purpose of John's gospel Jesus performed many of these signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. This is the Gospel of our Lord. So John's Gospel. Uh, I love John as he deals with the Jesus, the Christ story, if you like. So after a, se a sequence of events after the resurrection, John deals with what happens, Jesus' appearance when they were behind the closed doors. You know, in my mind, the way it works um, is that I want to make sense of everything. How do you get behind 
closed doors. And I have a thing about doors. Doors are important in my life because when I was a child, my mother was constantly saying, you know, will you shut the door, you know? So um, the doors, even at home now, I don't um, like doors that are open. And so we have to suspend, in a way, our logic, you know, this need that I have for explanation. They were behind closed doors, presumably tired, resting, confused, all the kind of stuff that we know um, in their humanity they would have been experiencing after the crucifixion. So someone, somewhere, somehow God in Jesus Christ manages to remember the frail humanity of the disciples. And so behind the closed doors, Jesus comes in uninvited. And I don't like people who come to my house uninvited. I've had to grow and get used to it as a priest because there are always people coming to my house uninvited. But here Jesus shows up when they least expected him to. You know, it's, it's really important. Sometimes we need Jesus to show up when we least expect him to. Uninvited. This Jesus in this time, at this moment in our journey here in England, here in Birchfield, we need that Jesus to turn up uninvited. Come behind our locked doors. And heaven knows the past few weeks we have been living almost semi-permanent, if you like, behind closed doors. Probably doing what the disciples did, doing some praying, probably overeating, all the kinds of stuff that we do behind closed doors. There the disciples were perturbed by what had happened. And so today as we remember this, this wonderful moment, here we question why didn't they know that Jesus was coming? Because Jesus did make it clear that he would come back and he is about their father's business and that he wouldn't leave them comfortless. So he comes among them and having come among them, they were astonished at his presence. It is important to remember that the disciples having to welcome this unexpected visitor. The times when Jesus comes in our midst and we don't even recognize him because nor did they. And they seem to waste no time in welcoming him. He comes in and guess what he did? That familiar Christ is our peace. The peace of the Lord be with you. Peace be with you, in other words. Shalom. And it's important because this is a very important part of Anglican worship. So the disciples were stunned, of course. Well, wouldn't you be? He comes in, you thought he was dead, and here he is in your midst, and you recognize him by his familiar tone of comfort, confidence, and reassurance. That's the kind of leaders we want today. Confident leaders who reassures and who brings help to bring some peace to the worried minds of our humanity, our community, and indeed our society. The circumstances needed someone to say, it's going to be okay, peace be with you. In the midst of their grief, and heaven knows they were in grief, today we are, many of us are grieving for loved ones, for friends. And it's the circumstances which makes it so difficult to do that. We're trusting that after the, this one, we've come through this, then like the disciples, we'll find time to sit down and remember. Today, the uncertainty and the confusion of the disciples must not be forgotten. The what now question. And maybe many of you, including myself, asking, well, what now? What do we do now that this has happened? These are important questions that governments, local and national, will be asking and should be asking. These are questions that you and I will ask. What do we do now? How do we find a new future? So the questions are still important. What kind of future are you and I going to talk about in a few weeks' time, we hope? The disciples like them, we have come through, and we can come through. But we have to rediscover 
something of what it means to have God's peace within our lives. We have to reshape our lives. The disciples had to reshape their lives. They were changed by the experience. There's not one of us who are going to come through this unscathed and untouched by it, whether it's through friends or neighbors or family indeed. How do we forge a new future? How do we find peace? How do we grapple like the disciples with all the difficult questions they had to ask? How do we create a new kind of world with love and peace? And I don't mean peace that is not costly. I mean peace that is costly, peace that is going to deal with the fundamental questions of our hate, our injustice towards one another, our lack of love for each other, our fear of differences. Today, as we come, I hope and trust that like the disciples, we will welcome Jesus among us, and we will welcome his boldness in the midst of the difficulties to say, peace be with you. And as we create a new world, that we'll create boundaries that are not going to obstruct and destroy, but boundaries between us that will keep us safe but boundaries that will also remind us that this world is for our world and our world is about how we, with the disciples through Jesus Christ, that despite our political and our cultural differences, we will die, find genuine peace. I don't mean frothy peace. I mean the peace of God, which will transform as it did the disciples' lives, but it will also transform us and ultimately our world. God bless you, God keep you. May you, through this season of Easter, find time to create and encourage a new peace, a world that needs fundamental changes, just like the world in which Christ lived. Amen. <laughs>